Bonjour, buenos dias, and konnichiwa. Oof, that's very international. I know. Can you tell which part we're going to next based on that? Epcot? There you go. I did it! You did it. So for those of you that are just joining us, and this is the first of the series that you're watching for our videos, while we've been stuck outside the parks, we've been talking with everyone about what things we're looking most forward to going back to the parks. Yeah. And we realized that when we talk about our favorite thing, which is dining, everything is our favorite. And yeah. I said to Ed, we need to start to figure out if we had to put things on our not favorite list, what would they be? Because I think things at Disney are everybody's all favorites. <laughs> There's nothing we don't Especially like. Especially right now. Yeah. yeah. And if you think about it, you probably like everything too. So today we're taking a trip over to Epcot and we're going to talk about our top three restaurants and why, okay. and our bottom three restaurants and why. Okay. And again, there's probably some controversial decisions here, but they're not places that we hate or dislike in any case, unless we say we do. They're just things that if we were to push, if we couldn't have favorites and we had to pick three at the bottom, what would they be? Okay. Okay. And last time we looked at Animal Kingdom and we realized that the things that combine the best for us are a restaurant that has Imagineer atmosphere, good food, and some sort of bonus, be it a drink or dessert item. Okay. So let's see if that cut holds true to that. All right. All right. Starting, I looked at our list and I realized our entire top, I don't have to start anywhere. It's World Showcase. Well, yeah. And I guess encompassed in World Showcase is all the festivals. Yeah. Flower and Garden, <laughs> Food and Wine, Festival of the Arts, Festival of the Holidays. What did I miss? Something. Something. But all those festivals, I think we're going to exclude those from this discussion because that's a whole other series. Yeah. It, that would definitely be our top choice yes. whenever going to Epcot. because Festivals are basically like a rotating menu for Epcot. Yeah, yeah. So aside from that, we do still have our, our top three and our bottom three. So we're just going to kind of pretend that doesn't exist right now. Yeah. It's so good. I miss it. But starting off the list in the World Showcase, La Hall. Particularly, yes. you made this note. Chicken scratch notes. Breakfast. Which you still can't read. I can't read them now. Yeah. Breakfast at La Hall, specifically. Yeah. Breakfast at Lake Hall over in the France Pavilion is something we like to kind of share with friends and family when they come here or maybe come often and just don't know to go grab it, mm -hmm. is the Breakfast at Lake Hall. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of a great option when you're looking for something to do. So, you know, once you get into the parks and now it's like, okay, well, where are we going to eat? Where are we going to eat? And, and it lets you into World Showcase before World Showcase actually opens for true. the day. So you can get a head start to the back of the park. <laughs> for all those people dashing over, which we don't do. But some mm -hmm. people do. Um, Le Hall is great. I think it's kind of a... What would you call it? Like a food I would call hall? it a, a Tour de France food <laughs> hall. So basically you get in line and you go down these beautiful cases of sweet, savory, baked goods, chocolates, yeah. everything. And it's just like, what do I want for my French breakfast to get today? Yeah. And literally anything you could think of from simple to fancy is there in the case. We're talking, you want macarons? There's a six pack of macarons. You want a gourmet giant macaron? There's that raspberry lime one that was Oh, amazing. that's good. Yeah. You want savory? You want a oh. croissant with, with ham and cheese on it? Right. We've got there's a that. Lot of croissant. There's a lot of... You want a quiche? Quiche, right? Mm -hmm. I think there's a couple of quiches. You want pan au chocolat? Uh, not yeah, pan au chocolat. Yeah, we could just yeah. go on and it, I could do my terrible French pronunciation, yeah. <laughs> which is why I'm sticking with English. Uh, me too. <laughs> um, there, yeah, it's a great, great, great option. Um, we like to do usually a savory and a sweet, mm -hmm. and we will usually share them because they're yeah. all very rich. It is French food. It is, it's rich. The prices are also very good, uh, considering yes. Disney, you know, all of them are speaking French to each other. Yes, which is it's nice. part of the it's cultural little, exchange program yeah. at Disney. So, so the people working at La Hall are, are French natives. Yeah, definitely someplace you don't want to miss in Epcot when you're looking for food and want something a little bit in that newly adventurous yeah. but still familiar food. Sure, at the end of the day, yeah. it's you can get a ham and cheese sandwich. Yes. <laughs> Just, right. I think Different. you can get a tuna sandwich as well. Yes. Like you can get the you know, salads. There's there's everything. Yeah, it's not too scary, but there are they are French things, which is nice, I think. Mm -hmm. And they're all baked on premises yeah. for the most part. Yeah. So they'll always tell you what they're baking that day and things like that. And Every meal there has those rotating items. So as much as we prefer breakfast because it gives us a head start to like an empty world showcase for photos and walking, yeah. you can go there any time of the day. Yep. And I'm super excited that the France Pavilion is expanding and we're getting potentially a creperie and a whole bunch of other things. So this might just be the beginning for the France Pavilion. 
Well, good. Yeah, I'm excited. It needs a little... Yeah. What country shall we go to next? Hmm. I'm going to stick with Quick Serve, and I'm going to go for Tangerine Cafe in Morocco. Oh, yeah. Tangerine is also a delicious option. Quick Serve as well. Yes, Quick Serve. Also, bizarre statement for a lot of people who don't know, but if you know, you know. Great cold water. Yes. It's always ice cold water. Which is great because by the time you've made the whole trek around World Showcase, you should have some water by then. So. Part of the secret to that reason, to be a nerd for a minute of Disney history, those of you who know, know, Morocco was a pavilion added later to the World Showcase. It's a slightly different system of oh. stuff there. So Also you, really explore that pavilion because it's amazing when you oh, walk inside. Through, yes. It makes sure you go all the way in. Don't just say, So again, oh, immersive okay. environments. Yeah. But um, in terms of food, I think it's great. The You know, we like to do the falafel... Oh, the sampler platter. Yeah, that's they have great. baklava for dessert. Yeah. They have everything. Again, I wouldn't say it's specifically Moroccan or Mediterranean food. It's Mediterranean inspired foods that a lot of us are familiar with. And then those few items that if you want to venture outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, we like it. We've been with friends who are vegan and they also really highly recommend it because you can get, you know, tabbouleh and falafel mm -hmm. and things like that that. You know, if you're sort of familiar with those types of food, you get a nice little platter, some ice cold water, and you're good. Yes. And it's it's fun in the restaurant, too, because everything is like artisan mosaics, and the decoration yeah. that's in there is handcrafted. The whole pavilion's beautiful, but even just sitting for the few moments with some of that little bits of stained glass over yeah. the doors, it's great. So don't miss Tangerine Cafe. Yeah. And I can't believe you didn't touch on this. If you're on the Disney dining plan, and you have a quick serve option... Not all quick serves are created equal. We know certain meals at certain quick serve establishments are less expensive yeah. and therefore a different value of your dining credits. Yes. Tangerine Cafe is one of the more expensive, more valuable because they're bigger platter items on the quick serve dining plan. Yeah. As of this moment right now, I'm sure there's going to be changes to a lot of stuff, you know, year by year in the future. But for the dining plan, quick serve, great value. How do you not do that? We haven't been on vacation to Disney World in a few years. So you don't think in that realm Yeah, anymore. but you're right. And because the platters are big, and if you get a baklava or something, you honestly will share it and save your dining credits. You're right. You yep, you're gonna, that's how you toast, taste your way around World Showcase. Not everyone gets a meal. Right. Just, One person gets it here. We share yeah. one person. And that way you spread, you know... Let's say there's a family of four, you just did lunch at four different establishments if you all wait yeah. and get it. Yeah, and when you're not going to a festival, you know, you want to, you still have that mindset of you want to try a bunch of international food. food. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't it's... have to hit the festival booths if there is no festival, Diet yeah. Epcot. You yeah. just hit the different pavilions. <laughs> Diet right? Epcot. Yes. It doesn't work because as you see, even when there's not a festival booth, we still know where to eat. That's true. So continuing around our, our tour of the world, after Morocco comes China, in no geography whatsoever, <laughs> but... World Showcase Geography, not even there. But China, next restaurant, Nine Dragons. I know for a lot of people, Nine Dragons is a hit or miss. But again, talking about immersive environment and international influence, it's one of our favorite dining establishments for unique reasons. Yeah, I will say this one was, was a tough one for us to pick a third. Uh, we like a lot of the restaurants around the World Showcase. We also have to add... In the part of Orlando where we live, there's not a lot of great Chinese food. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, I think it's better than the Chinese food we get here. And I'm sitting in Epcot and you're at least with the cultural representative. So it makes it mm -hmm. more fun. It's not the best Chinese food you'll ever have, but it's it's good. Yes. And the one thing that I like is when we go into any of the restaurants in World Showcase that are sit-down table service, we'll talk with our server if it's not a crazy busy time. Keep in mind, they're cultural exchange yes. representatives from the other countries, as you mentioned. So... Your server at Nine Dragons might be just starting their program or just finishing and looking forward to traveling the U.S. before they head home. So there's a lot of this opportunity yeah. to talk with them about what they're bringing, what they're looking to learn, what their experiences have been visiting different parts of the U.S. and, and working for Disney. Yeah. And they will even give you some tips on the menu of some more traditional yes. Chinese dishes if you're looking right. to eat that. So, yes, they have their honey chicken, which is, you know, our sesame-style chicken right. for those of you that are familiar but then they also have some dishes where they'll tell you the story behind. This is, you know, a traditional family dish for this type of event. Yes. It's things you wouldn't traditionally see right. in a Chinese restaurant. So in it actually can be a more authentic Chinese food restaurant than you're used to. But it also could just be 
essentially a P.F. Chang's if you really want that too. Mm -hmm. So so again, the, the spectrum of availability yes. there. And I think a lot of the World Showcase table service restaurants yeah, allow for that. I think so, yeah. But, oh, and also the, the craftsmanship inside the that restaurant. Beautiful yeah. wood paneling, jade, just yeah. everything is gorgeous. Yes. And it has one of my favorite topiaries half the year, which is the pandas right out front. Oh, those or are cool. when the pandas aren't on display, it has one of my favorite bamboo plants, which oh. is just the craziest looking bamboo. So, more, so more something around. else to pay attention to in all these World Showcase pavilions, the plants change depending on the time yes. of year and still somehow relate to the pavilion. And either way, it's panda themed, apparently. Bamboo, panda, oh, okay, yeah. See, yes, I yeah. see that. All right, the the part I think that you love, which is bashing the bottom three. That's not true. <laughs> and Maybe. actually, Animal Kingdom, we didn't do any bashing. It was all good, but we had to push yeah. the bottom three. Yeah. I will present you with the opportunity to bash because in no particular order, but at the top of my list, the first one I wrote down, the beginning of our bottom three. Controversial here, but stay with us because again, we had to pick a bottom three. We couldn't avoid any. And I present to Ed Coral Reef Restaurant. Oh, Coral Reef. <laughs> All right. So we went, it had to have been the first, right after we first moved here, my birthday. Mm -hmm. We're going to go somewhere different. We're going to go to a sit down. And I had never been to Coral Reef. I thought, oh, cool. Whatever, I, I'm looking forward to some fish. And I remembered it being a fun restaurant, sitting there, food. My memories were accurate because it's still stuck in 1984. Yeah. Is that the year the pavilion opened, 84? I don't know, yeah. but it, it feels like it's stuck. Yeah. The colors. Couple, <laughs> yes. The cast member costumes. Yes. All right. Main thing, though, is I think it's cool. I mean, I think it's cool that there's a big old fish tank and everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. I live with someone who works in architecture, and that's something that's automatically going to be part of our discussion. And it just sort of, nothing really faces the water the same way that it should. It doesn't... Yeah, the dining experience is just kind of, you're next to the aquarium instead of yeah. staring off into the deep water. And I feel like that's a, a miss. Yeah. Because we all, you know, there's round booths in the restaurant that do face out. But then if you're at a table for two, you're facing each other with... The window to your side and if you're at one end or the other it just it is not taking the opportunity of oh my goodness we're underwater in an aquarium and that should be the first thing when you're dining is yeah. you should not forget that and you know even like because it was my birthday we started off with a drink but the cast member the only thing i can re remember is that he just sort of was here's the magical star cocktail that you know you can get anywhere. Yeah, it was missing it. It was missing its own drink list yeah, for a no signature center. restaurant. There was no vibe of whoa, cool. I'm like in this almost underwater feel. It was oh, here's the magical star. You can get it everywhere on property, and it's not that great anyway. It just flashes, and then from there it was like oh, the food was so under seasoned. Um, my fish was actually super overcooked mm -hmm. uh, to the point that it was almost rubbery. It just was. It not wasn't celebrating. The great location right. that it has. And the fish really should be the star. You are at a seafood restaurant surrounded by fish. Who are Which I also realize is now right? creepy, yes. Yeah. So it better be good. And to to dishonor the fish that way, mm -hmm. it just was not... And when you're in Epcot and you have the land and the seas and every dish, I almost felt like should have more richness to its story yeah. and why it's on the menu. Right. And it shouldn't feel like it's a static menu. This is the fish in season. This is the greens that come with it right. from the land. And as frequent diners at Disney, these are not foreign things that we're saying to certain restaurants. Like you come to expect a certain level and Coral Reef misses that mark. Yeah. And if it is your only experience with Coral Reef, absolutely go. We're not saying don't go there and don't enjoy it. You might be. I'm not, because I think it's a unique experience. But for it those is. of us that have the opportunity to pick and choose the restaurants, it's underserving what it could be in that space. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It just, it really needs to be done a service and be mm -hmm. treated the way it should be, because it could be a really cool spot for people to go to. Yep. Like much of Epcot, it needed a rebirth, and maybe we'll see one with the rest of Epcot construction. Who knows? Maybe. Oh, should we just stay in the rebirth of Epcot and Future World and, and jump right over to Sunshine Seasons? Sunshine Seasons. Mm-hmm. All right, now that I one... think it's seasons past. <laughs> it's out of season. Yes, it is out of season. All right, here's the problem with Sunshine. 
We're going to keep stumbling over and over again because it is impossible sunshine to say season. sunshine seasons. Su it's almost as bad as Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Blah, 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 blah. Sunshine Seasons is a good concept. Yes. I, you know, it's, it, it's a bunch of different menus. It's kind of like a food court. It is mm -hmm. a food court. Yes. Um, but I think the problem is it kind of feels like an 80s, 90s food court. It's, it looks like one, too. Yeah, it does. I mean, there, there's the seasonal hot air balloons overhead. Th that whole pavilion just got new things and never got updated. Yeah. So Soren is there, which makes the traffic flow terrible, which means everyone's walking through the middle of the dining spaces at Sunshine Seasons. The decor is still from 1980-whatever. Yeah. I remember those hot air balloons used to move. They haven't moved since 1989. I still don't believe it, yeah. It's just everything was kind of forgotten about because I think everyone's just on their way to Soarin' and you don't need to pay attention to the rest of that. Yeah. Unless you're going to sit down and eat, then you're paying attention to it. I don't think... And we've eaten there a few times, I have to say, because it is sometimes just right there. And they have a lot of specialty items through the different festivals and seasons as well. Yeah. They, it, so that is a plus for them. They it's have good, great. Like, you know, we did have a very good peanut butter cake that we had oh, in the last yeah. festivals. Um, so there's great things there, but the actual meals, I haven't loved anything I've ever had there. The food is fine. Yes, it's... Right now, I think it's the only food in Future World at the moment, but it definitely was the top of Future World dining. But again, just, it's fine. But it, yeah. it deserves so much more. Again, with the integration, with, with the, being in the land pavilion, there's right. greenhouses. It deserves more, and it deserves an update of its space as well. I understand there's challenges, you know, with Soren being in one spot, and the food service in another, and the tables in the middle. But All this takes is someone to step back and look and say, this is how everyone's moving. Yeah. Let's do that. And it would be such a better pavilion. Yeah, why not have a seasonal menu that changes? And sunshine the season, seasons. Right, yeah. And, and, and then you're right. And really heavily emphasize the land because a lot of people just go on the ride in the land because, it's, oh, okay, I don't know what this is. And yeah, the pavilion doesn't make sense anymore. It's the pavilion that has Soren. It's not the land anymore. Yeah, and so you sort of don't see the vegetables there and how they're applied to the restaurants. And that'd be great. I would love to go get. You know, a micro green salad from and, all you the... Know, the... The Flower and Garden Festival, they do say when the greens yeah, come. so why not there? Why not do it yeah. all year round at some of the restaurants? So that's just, again, I think, missed opportunity more than anything. Yeah. It, again, it's fine. Mm -hmm. and rounding out the bottom of our list, I feel like this is on the list only because we needed to force a third to the bottom of the list. Because I do like it, but there's places I will go before. Beer Garden. Yeah... Was that a y'all? Yeah. <laughs> so, if you don't know, we spent, well, you've been to Germany multiple mm -hmm. times. Um, and we spent a month living in Germany while I was doing right. some research for school. Right. So we've spent quite a bit of time in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, and their food is awesome in Germany, I think. Yes. Um, and we were like, okay, cool. In fact, our very first vlog... Oh, let me, we'll flash back to that, but I'll make here somewhere. That's but, probably terrifying. But we went to Beer Garden, and we're like, cool, let's try it. Mm -hmm. And you're I, looking at some of that footage right now. <laughs> it, it's just okay. It's an American approach to German food. And one of the... Which, which I understand, actually. Yes. I don't think it should be all just, like, in-your-face... German food, because that's a lot. And, and also, lot one of the of... things you learned when you were in Germany, which I, I had already known from going, German food is very regional as well. Yes. So what you get in the southwest of Germany, you're not getting in any other region necessarily. Yeah. So there's a lot of foods that were significant to my family with some background to Germany that you're familiar with that you just don't get at any German restaurant. So because nice. yeah. Oh. But some of it you do. So a lot of the foods, I think we were a little bit tainted walking in, having our expectation of German food. And I think it tried to deliver a holistic German menu. That's that's number one. And that's difficult. So that that's, is true. That, and that's, you know, that, that is the same thing probably to be said for China. There's many different regions and some yes. of the stuff is not going to fit your thing. And that's the same thing for... The Japanese restaurants. Yeah. Matsukoshi. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there... We didn't hate any of the food. That no, I, I didn't even dislike any of it. There were things I preferred over others. The food was good. 
The experience was fun. I think a reason we push it to the bottom of the list is you will be dining with people you don't know depending on how yes, big your party is. Yes, and that is. is not for everybody. Correct. Which is cool, and that's that's popular in parts of Germany. Mm -hmm. So they're big, like, banquet beer garden tables. So they see, I'm trying to think how big some of the tables got anywhere from, like, six to ten people. So if you're a party of four, you're going to join another party of four. Or I think that's two. fun. It's fun I for like us. We that. had a great time, and we had a lot of fun with another uh, group at our table. It was a great time. But I think when you think about that, we had to push that to the bottom of the list because it isn't always what you want in dining. And it's not always what we want. Sometimes we want, you know, a dining experience for the two of us. This will not fulfill that. Yeah, I agree with that. Because it's, it's also strange you kind of go to a buffet and then you bring the buffet table to your, to your table. And you're sitting with other people. Well, yeah. So and then there's a show that you're watching. All of it is great. But it's disjointed. Very disjointed. You don't know when you're supposed to get up and get food and when you're not because it's, it's rolling kind of. Mm -hmm. So it is like any other buffet restaurant. You just go serve yourself when you want. But there's also a sense of order to it because you're sitting and ordering your drinks and your beers. They do have fun beer. From a server who's serving you and potentially three other parties. So you don't know, like, do you get up when they're not getting up? So it's it's fun. It's a great time. It is a great yeah. restaurant. The show's a ton of fun. It's it's just a hoopla. But you need to know that going into it. So I think that's why we, like, force this one to the bottom. Yeah. Because it's, it's unique in that nature. And we haven't eaten at some of the other bigger buffets in Epcot, come to think of it. Like, we have not eaten at... We've not eaten at Akershus for the princess dining. Mm -hmm. So it's the only buffet that I can think of that we go to at Epcot. Yeah, I think that's true. So because it's not just a buffet with your own table, we're like, you know what? This one falls outside the mold. We're going to put it to not a regular go-to for us. Yeah, it almost like I wanted it to be more family style, but that like to different tables mm -hmm. almost. Like but... they almost bring the, the platters of yeah. food. Yeah. But then you have other strangers touching your food, which especially now would be a problem. But Even buffets are going to be a problem yeah. now, come to think of it. But. but, yeah, I don't know. I also found, I personally found the food over salty and under seasoned. Um, the and American that, way. Maybe. <laughs> but you're just reading potatoes. You can't go wrong with potatoes normally, but they would just... Boiled potatoes. Yeah. Yep. Like it was like, yeah, it was like they were boiled in salt water and then put it in. I was like, oh, this isn't... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think if we were to if we were to start to really pick it apart, we could find reasons why we don't like it. But the ultimate response was just, well, we go there. It's just not at the top of our go-to. And I think that's everything that we put at the bottom in Epcot, excluding Coral Reef. Because Coral Reef just really needs some help right now. Yeah. But everything else is just, when we have to put things to the bottom, you have to find reasons to separate. And that's one of them. Yeah. Which would also be a plus. It's a unique experience. Right. That is why it is our negative, and it could be a plus as well. So certainly don't skip Beer Garden, but also keep in mind it's very unlike any other dining experience at Disney. Yeah, and, and some of those places we might want to give it another shot, because I do believe in Oh, it. I will go to Beer Garden again. I like it. Yeah. Or you like the concept. Yes, I like yeah. going to Beer Garden. I like, uh, I'd like to go to a Beer Garden right now. Yes. Yeah. I would like to go to Epcot right now. Yeah. Soon. We never even got to Soon. Flower and Garden. So, if you want to go to Epcot with us, be sure to give this video a giant thumbs up. And, if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe to be notified where our next destination or food reminiscing might be. And click the bell icon to be notified when we get there. But for now, adios, sayonara, au revoir. Oh. Those were the same three languages I opened with. Hooray for me. Not hola, or... It was a lot of... We'll talk about that later. All right.